This is the Tough Hub, a show brought to you by Tough Africa Global to educate you on real estate matters, to mentor you and inspire you. It's after 48 years of working and also traveling all over the world, I am ready to share my experience with you, especially those young ones who follow me for inspiration. speak about empowerment. Do you know that Fatim, probably in the whole of Africa, must have been the youngest ever minister? Female, can I say so? At what age were you a minister? 22. At, at 24 years, do you know that Fatim Baji, at 24 years, she was appointed as the minister of health? Was it health? Communication. Ladies and gentlemen, um this topic empowerment, I really didn't prepare to, to talk about my accomplishments, but I'll try my best to add in some of the things that I have um, experienced along the way that has been great. So empowerment to me is just not a word. It's the profound concept that really brings out the essence of human potential and dignity. Today I stand before you to talk about the power of empowerment and how the complexities are really tied in our own self-worth abilities and recognition of our inherent value. Now, I'll give you an example of how I start my day every morning. When I wake up, I have my cup of coffee, which I've kind of addicted to, take care of my kids. And the first thing I do is I go on YouTube and I listen to inspirational videos. After, of course, while I'm doing, taking care of my kids, I'm listening to some duas, right? So after that, it's inspirational videos. I listen to that, listen to different people, listen to things that will prompt me up, speak, positivity into my life while I'm getting ready. That's how I go about it on a daily basis. So I walk out of that house empowered almost every single day. I believe empowerment is about being enabled, being supported to apply yourselves fully. It's about acknowledging and embracing your abilities, whether it's your skills, your rights, your voice, your ideas, or your very own presence in this world. Sounds very rosy, right? Well, I know life can be tough. And it's not always easy to lift your head or get what it is that you, you know that you, can, you want or you, you know that you can get. And it's even harder when you're feeling down. But it, it is in those moments that you rise up, in those moments that you stand tall and you remember that each of us, including yourself, has a purpose and you are here for a reason. Empowerment begins with self-love, self-worth, self-value, self-recognition, and the will to give yourself the best, much more people. In my childhood, I was supported to do many things, thanks to my parents. I remember at the age of five, I was reading very well to the point where my parents bought me so many books and um, in playing sports in our house, growing up with brothers, you know, they would be playing Nintendo, and I was playing Nintendo just like them. We were all equals in the house. We contended, we shared, whether it's in sports or anything, irrespective of being a girl in the house. My dad even hired a tennis coach because he believed in my, phys my physical sport abilities at some point. And he supported me in doing, you know, prose and poetry and Throughout that moment, there were signs in that uh, early application of different activities and you know, learning about myself and what I like and what I don't like. Not only did it, at a very young age did I win the National Poetry Award uh, in the Gambia, but we had one of the best literature results and won awards in prose. At the age of 16, you know, was youth of the momentum of the Gambia during our time, you know, applying applying myself in so many categories, being a prefect almost throughout my life, including deputy head girl, you know, having this responsibility at home and in school. So at home, I had a lot of responsibility as the first daughter, and also at school, there were responsibilities given to me uh, because, you know, I, I was maturing quickly, I think as a child, because you, you discover yourself through many activities. So 
I would admit that um, as terms of, in terms of my nurturing of my ability, I was empowered at a very early stage thanks to my parents and also my siblings that I've had. Very supportive. They, they were my biggest critics, but at the same time, they were the people who empowered me the most. Now, I would admit that my childhood was not always very smooth. It was very challenging. I actually want to share that with you, and I hope you can relate. You know, I recall having many difficulties because you know, I, I changed a lot of schools, and that's why I know a lot of young people, uh, people my age. You know, I was moving from one school to another, one school to another, as my dad was a diplomat, and when I came back, my age was in that specific place where the one school I'm in, then you have to move to another school. So that affected me at some point, and um, I was academically confused at middle school, I would say. On the contrary, I had very genius brothers who, uh, over the ordinary, I'm sure you've met Dr. Baji, he's come here and already spoken, right? Actually, he has been like the type to take fourth in the Gambia, my older brother taking second, first in the Gambia. Those kind of family, that's actually the kind of siblings I had growing up. They kept very high grades at a national level. My older brother from grade seven or grade eight in high school, he took first in his class up to grade 12. Can you imagine having a brother like that? Okay, that's what I had to deal with. So I felt very trapped in many times that academia actually was an obstacle to my creative talents. And unfortunately, I had parents who believed so much in academia that <clears throat> I felt like I wasn't going to be good enough unless I proved myself academically. Um, I wanted to give up in so many times, so many uh, events. I also felt like I didn't have what it take. I could have thought about, you know, taking up domestic punishment and resent the way of my life that I'm not capable. Because the pressure was high. I would read and apply myself more than my own siblings, but they would achieve far more than me. So I was being punished for being average at some occasions and at the expense of my extraordinary results from my brothers. When I was 14, I remember praying and searching deep within myself to believe that I had what it took to be great too. I had what it took to thrive because I didn't lack anything that they had. Not only did we eat the same meal, we went to the same schools, and we also went to the same, we came from the same womb. We had the same teachers as well. So I realized that I had to maximize on my strength to make a mark, to make myself happy with who I am and what I can do. I experienced this mindset shift at the age of 14 years, and I never looked back. When I started focusing on me, focusing in my lane, I became happier. My parents became more appreciative of who I was as a different child, and I thank God for the awakening. In summary, what I mean to say to you is that most times, believe, most times people believe that you need people to empower you, which is fine. But the true sense of empowerment comes from within. Whether it's your sibling, whether it's your colleague at school, or work, wherever it may be, business competitor, whatever it may be, you know, you have to learn from a very early stage in life how to be loyal to your authentic self and maximize on what is it that you come with and what is it that you can do. There's a great quote that I, I read. It's by Kam Kamak II. It says, all paths differ, but the way is always the same. I was certain at the age of 14 that I will do all that I can with what I've got. And when I, I am further supported, I can do greater and bigger things. And when I'm giving back, that is, becomes the essence of me positively contributing to the world. So empowerment and dignity are inseparable. You truly cannot exist without the other. To have dignity means to have value, respect, and take ownership of your own life, ensuring that you give yourself the best. Dignity is the essence of honorable love and the foundation in which empowerment is built. This is my interpretation of empowerment. 
it is in this spirit that I was able to get through college without a scholarship in the USA. I even composed a song that would get me through the hardest hours of my life, the difficult, darkest hours of my life. And it reminded me that all I had to do was to hold on, stand up, and find my strength and my existence in this world. And that highlighted to me and instilled in me the importance of resilience, the importance of determination. And this I carried throughout my life. I learned that we find our self-worth not in material possessions, you know, or financial wealth. Our self-worth is from our abilities, our creativity, and the impact we can make in the world. Whether you're trying to do a business, it doesn't matter how much money you have to start your business. What matters is, what's the idea, what's the vision, what's the concept? You have to be intentional about it. You start, you're already looking at the end. Hmm? That's what that's about. We educate our children to unlock their potentials, right? But for adults, we must be able to harness our skills and create from our thoughts and our abilities. And I would think for older generations, like Uncle Tuff, he's doing exactly what we need of him in society. And that's sharing wisdom and experiences and leaving a legacy that propels the future of growth for generations to come. It's an essential that we are blessed, we understand that we are blessed with different gifts and talents. We're not the same, but we are all empowered by the same force, which is God. We are bestowed with the knowledge, the abilities, and the gifts from the moment of creation. I mean, who taught a new baby how to suckle? The moment the umbilical cord was cut off, who taught the child that? So the child already knows from the get-go that they have strength and resilience within them. So we have it all. I want to draw inspiration from the story of Hijra, who was the wife of Pro Prophet Abraham. You know, as I went recently to Aj, you know, I felt very much uh, in relation, I felt very much connected to her. You know what inspired me about her, Hijra, the mother of Ishmael, is her unwavering faith as she searched for sustenance for her son Ishmael at Safa Marwa. Her belief was that God would provide, and this led her to the miraculous Zamzam well. You know, the moment she knew that God would provide, she didn't sit. She was moving back and forth, back and forth. What was she doing? Some people say she was desperate. No, she wasn't desperate. She was looking for what she believed existed for her and her survival. And that belief became the foundation of the great city of Mecca. Her empowered actions set in motion a change of events that brought profound impact to generations to come. In my own life, I've come to understand that all my plans has not unfolded as I expected. But all God's plans were greater than them. There's no success that is not accompanied by trials and tests. No one gets away with that. It's through the challenges that you realize what empowerment means. Empowerment is about embracing your authentic self, accepting that not everyone will appreciate you or even know you, but you must be true to yourself. You know? I like to see it like being a fragrance. You know? our, our presence should be, bring about positivity and beauty to the world to leave an impact that can be remembered. Silence does not imply a lack of voice. A true empowerment, true empowerment is demonstrated through actions. A truly empowered person is content with what they bring to the table. A truly empowered person is contributing somehow to progress. 
in their personal lives and also in society. I'm just mentioning this because I just want you to know that empowerment is just not about self. It's really at the end of the day how you empower others. The first stage is empowering yourself, but the second stage is how you impact and empower others. To empower a nation or a community, we must be provided with the essential tools and resources. A surgeon needs instruments for a successful surgery, we all know that. But a business also requires individuals who are skilled for growth. How are we going to build the nation if we don't even have technical people who can actually build? Right, Uncle Tom? Isn't that an issue? Yeah. We need to hand those tools to those who can build. Empowerment is about a woman having her rights fulfilled and protected, whether it's legal or religious rights or perspective. Our industry needs sufficient vocational, technical, skilled workers to build this place. We also need to empower the poor to harness livelihoods. We cannot continue to live in poverty. The middle class or middle society, those who are having, you know, livelihood sustainability or job security, these people need to be elevated to become wealthy. We need to have wealthy people in this country, right? Also our government, our government needs to retain and build on this nation through the hands of good sons and daughters of this country who don't mind serving. We are those who have integrity. We are those who mean well. When you go to charity events, you go to our occasions, you find a trusted hand to share the food, to cook the food, right? That's the same thing. That's what we expect from people who work for our governments. So for this reason, I believe we cannot produce anything that we're not empowering. Are we thinking as a nation, as people, as young people, how we're going to map out our future? Are we thinking for ourselves? Or are we absorbed by distractions of opinions, reacting to problems, spiritual hypnotists, noise, and so much more that we can't even hear the call? And the call is saying what? Action for growth, empowerment. Something to think about. Uncle Taf, I won't make justice to this unless I speak to my woman, right? Because I believe the essential part of me being empowered is also the fact that I'm a woman. It is undeniable that the progress of women has been attained, right? I'm going to deny that. We're seen in high offices here and there, political seats, yeah, we see that. In businesses as well. We see women empowering a lot of institutions, great. But in my view, the empowerment of women is not for a selected few. That's an elitist ideology. Empowerment of women is the upliftment of all women from poverty to prosperity to end discrimination and provide equal opportunities for women. Women should be adequately protected and provided for. And I'm speaking about the Gambian context now. Now, in the event where you cannot provide and protect your woman, my view, give them the opportunity to protect themselves and provide for themselves. Success has no gender and has no boundaries. There's progress and prosperity in every cornerstone. I had the opportunity to thrive in my career in decision-making tables. As a leader who believed, as a leader who I, I met, who believed and empowered me, you know, a leader who believed that I had something to contribute. And throughout my 14 years of business, you know, anyone who has ever worked for me and still works for me will know that I have supported them to learn and prosper and make means. And everywhere I meet up with them, I'm always so proud and happy because they, I have contributed to their understanding of strategic communications, their understanding of training, their understanding of research, you know, 
and also the understanding of teamwork and entrepreneurship. And that's something that I am extremely happy with. I'm very happy when I work with people that I assist them to unlock and harness their own skills. I'm happy when I motivate people around me and teams to bring better results and progress. And I'm happier when the environment is positive and supportive. The journey to empower, to empowerment might be challenging for many, especially for women. Brothers, you know this, it's very hard to empower us ladies, but I can tell you, it truly is rewarding for men and their legacy when they have empowered women around them. As we support, as you support and uplift us, we uplift your families, you know, we uplift your communities, your society, your home. As a mother of two boys, I dare to say that I live in a society where young men need to also be empowered. So I'll just leave you with five points of what keeps me empowered. The first one is power of belief. I believe in God and I believe in myself. <laughs> I really do believe that. You know, when you're a child, you believe in yourself. It's like, you're not going to be a child. No, 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 no. There's something in you that's making you believe that you can do these crazy things. But like Maya Angelo said, if it doesn't scare you, your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough, right? The second one is power of choice. I choose what I want in my life. I take responsibility for the consequences of my failures and the consequences of my choices and my decision. I choose what works for me. I don't just follow whatever people are doing, whether the trend is this, whether this is that, what is that. I, I ask myself, what do, what do I want to wear? What do I feel like? And that's what I do. And if I'm not sure, I consult, but I also have a belief that I don't do things I doubt. So if I have doubts, I don't do it. Because I don't want to live with that regret. So power of choice, whether I'm in any situation that I feel is not for me, no longer for me, I would not choose it. And if it's for me, I would choose it and I would go after it, like a hawk, because I chose it, right? The third one is power of focus, power to focus. It is the most difficult thing to focus, especially when you're young. You have your whims, you have your desires, you have all these things that are just social media, it's just such a big influence in your life. You know, when I want to really focus, actually I normally get off social media. My personal networks all just disappear. And that's because I'm in a zone and I need to focus. And there's just too many distractions. You know, I mean, the biggest way to see how it's difficult to focus is just when people are just all over the place making noise, making, and you're just trying to think. It's the most impos impossible thing to do, right? Just imagine trying to focus on your career or where you're trying to go. So number three is power to focus. And number four for me is power of will. How bad do I want it? You have to be passionate. You must have the willpower and, you know, the strength to say, okay, yeah, today was a bad day, it's hard, but you know what, I'm going to keep going on with this internship. Or oh, today, today I didn't make any sales, but you know what, tomorrow's going to be another day. You know, you just keep on coming. You just keep on coming because you have a will and a belief. Because you chose that. And because you are focused. And the last thing that I live by is acceptance. I accept whatever results comes out because I feel like I've given my best to what I have done. Just like Fadi said, excellence is, is not a destination, it's a lifestyle. So if you put in all the work and it doesn't work out for you, it's not for you. But if it's going to work out for you, I can bet you it'll be greater than what you had expected. And when you fail, I fail. I'd love to talk about that more than my progress, actually. But it's about acceptance. Yeah. So in conclusion, I would like to just put out there that it's important to keep learning. I'm always learning. And it's important to get good mentorship. I can't mention those who have mentioned and mentored me. Well, some pretty big tycoons all over this country and world have mentored me. 
in so many ways that I cannot ever re repay them. And my only hope is that I can share that with whoever has um, come to path with me or have crossed my path or we've come together. I think as a whole, we just need to know that we're not where we need to be as a nation, as a people. We are the builders and we have to build this place and we have to be empowered enough to create and contribute and succeed. It's not going to be handed over to us. We are the ones who create the motion that will bring the change reaction that will inspire and uplift the generations to come. And that will leave the legacy of growth and progress and development that the Gambia deserves. God has already empowered you, so what are you going to do about that? Uncle Taf, I hope I didn't disappoint by not talking about my accomplishments, but I think those, you can find them online. <laughs> Recently, you know, I had this project called The Diplomat, which came out of a need. It's a property development for housing, I mean, for commercial space for offices and also for uh, apartments. So the concept came from me renting for 14 years and wanting to set up our own headquarters. And as I did that, I said, no, maybe I should find a means to also make money from you know, the environment that I'm going to build for the headquarters anyway. Then I realized that, hmm, in Gambia, people are not really uh, owning office spaces. They're just renting. So I said, okay, I'm going to now build the first center that people would own places to actually um, own property that they are using for businesses and commercial space. And also a company accommodation that is in the city. Everything is around the beach area, and I think it's important that we build a city. And this is, was the vision, and miraculously, it happened. And when I was talking about it, I don't think anyone in my office believed me. <laughs> they really thought I was dreaming. When I bought my plan, which cost me 4,000 4, euros, everybody was looking at me like, are you crazy? Where are you going to get the money to do this? Power of belief, it happened. And I thank God for that. So I would just say that as the latest, greatest. But also, you get realistic at times, you know, with, with everything. You know, I started becoming a little bit, um, I would not say bored, but I wanted a bigger challenge. And so I ventured into an industry that is IT, thriving across the world in security. And I'm doing that as well. So as I speak to you now, I have three jobs. I only have one day off uh, in a week, and I've been like that for the past, I don't know, maybe, 15 years. I don't remember a time I've always ever had only one job. And so it requires a lot of discipline, as my brother has said here. But I'm so passionate about it. It's not work to me. I wake up every morning and I'm ready to go up to the time I sleep. And I go to bed early and I wake up very early. And it's not because I don't want to like watch Netflix all night. It's because I have a goal in the morning that I want to make. And some people might not like it and say, oh, you're doing too much. It's not their life, it's your life. Do too much until you feel tired and then go get some rest and recover. Do as much as you can give yourself and as you can give the world. I'm sorry for this long statement, but I would like to thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Uncle Taf. I hope it was good. watching the tough hop until we come your way on our next episode subscribe like and share